Beneath the dark voids of the universe, beneath planets, between, beneath moons, lies the asteroids. These huge celestial bodies are as tall as the Aqua Tower, 500 meters in diameter, about four times better. NASA really weren't cares about asteroids. Even though Darth Vader once famously said, asteroids don't concern us, but they obviously do for NASA. Stay tuned on our broadcast as we talk about asteroids and our NASA mission is Irish Rex update for NASA. Hi, my name is Megan Juan and I'm the NASA early NASA ambassador in Australia for the mission Zyrus Rex. And I'm the youngest in the world. If you just joined, I'm doing a video on Zyrus Rex today and an update on how things have been going at the Lunar Propulsion Laboratory and the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Hi. So, I've, I've actually had many questions coming in YouTube, Facebook, and other social media platforms. And the first question was, how are we gonna map Benny? Well, we have many sensors on board the spacecraft. The first one is actually quite important. It's the thermal emission spectrometer, which measures the ke chemical and thermal properties of Benny, and the compositions of thermal properties and compositions of Benny. And it also measures thermal inertia, which is gonna determine if the surface is very sandy. Now, Azaris Rex is built for a really sandy surface. That's why it's not going to pick up, pick up a rock, which is actually one of the other questions. Are you going to pick up a rock? Would that be better than like a hundred, hundreds of hundreds of tiny grams of ice, ice or sand? Well, the thing is, Azaris Rex isn't actually designed for rocks. It's designed specifically for sand. It could damage it, and most of those rocks could be bouldered onto the surface. And most of the rocks are actually like building size. So they're humongous. And Ozara Strix can possibly capture all of it. So it'll be way easier to connect sand. And sand has a more can, can have more of it, like minerals, like carbon. And that's the reason actually we chose Benham. And that brings me to my next question. Why do we choose Benham? Well, it has a nice surface and it's even though it's somehow rocky, it has a nice landing spot called Nightingale. And it could actually lead to the to the beginning of life itself on Earth. Because carbon, nickel, cobalt. Um, if you want to learn more about that topic and what type of minerals are in Benham, you can watch my video of why Benham. And there's another video, um, which you can, both those videos you can find linked in the description, uh, description box below. The other video is called Mission Azaris Rex. There's a video covering that there. It's going to talk about why Benham was chosen, how Azaris Rex is going to get the sample, and interviews with people and their opinions on Azaris Rex. <laughs> that came in is, how did we map Bennu at first? Was it all due to weird properties and calculations? Or did you have like a huge radar telescope? I like weird properties and calculations, and calculus, physics, maths, everything like that, science. But the thing is, we had a huge radar telescope in Puerto Rico, which is actually an observatory. And then it was only pretty low resolution and not high graphical. But then when it's ours, as you can see the pictures right here, of the observatory and the picture that were first conceived by the observatory, but they were actually quite low quality. So we actually mapped Ozaris Rex to go get the pictures. It was only a small pixel at once. But then that small pixel grew into a whole entire world. And it became the smallest world ever to be ordered. It was. And now it's time for a short commotion break from Copia. I'll be back with you shortly. Thanks for watching our broadcast. And better, um, I've been just talking about how the Azaris Rex mapping and how the big observatory in Puerto Rico works, and how we Azar better grew from a pixel into a world from Azaris Rex's cameras. Now we can talk about how it really maps it. Because the thing is, can you imagine a bit of a landing site full of building-sized boulders, and the landing 
inside is only like a few parking spaces big. You can see this in the 3D animation here. It's only from parking spaces. It's quite a very big boulder. And we actually had a bit of a hard time looking for a good sample site. Now I remember, I was actually mapping the sample sites when, when I became a natural ambassador. I got to map some of the landing sites for it. And the actual one that was actually chosen for the landing site for Cyrus Rex was, drum roll please, Nightingale. If you want to learn more about Nightingale and what actually happened, you can watch my video. Um, we are finally going to ask for Bennett. But I'll tell you a bit about how we're going to actually land them. The thing is, in order for it to come out, we're going to use NFT, Natural Feature Tracking, or NFT for short. Um, and mind you, there are 18 and a half for every signal going back to Osiris Rex, to back to Earth, which is down here, and back. So it's 18 and a half minute delay. So 18 and a half minutes before they actually got the sample, they were like, uh, well, they actually, I don't want to say this, before they actually gave the command, um, they knew it hadn't happened, but they haven't actually seen it yet, because the video delay or the breadcrumbs, they call it, the little pieces, of, the key pieces of info coming down. And one of the actual breadcrumbs that we could actually use, oh, you can hear the bird singing in the live stream. Um, hopefully that won't disturb us on the camera. Um, so we're gonna actually use the breadcrumbs, which is actually gonna do small, tiny increments of info, like position uncertainty, one meter, 0 0.5 meters. And every time we add throws that position uncertainty from the natural feature tracking or NFT, is actually gonna increase. The position uncertainty from the NFT or the natural fridge tracking is going to increase every time you add thrust. And so if the position uncertainty keeps decreasing, that means we're go for tag. And tag stands for like touch and go. Because can you imagine it? If you like gently touch an asteroid and then just gently go. So that's what touch and go means. That's what you, that's what you, that the, you actually do by touching go. And you might imagine it as, hey, how, 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 how can it be different? pick up something with go, I, I mean, I can do that with a robot arm, but the thing is, we're in space. And Bennu has a really small microgravity, and after going in orbit, and even going down into Bennu's surface, if you put too much energy, when you actually try to pick it up, you know, you can start a motion, and reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. You can watch a video called Newton's Laws in Physics 1, that's another video, I've got a whole video covering Newton's Laws in Physics, that was Physics 1. Anyway. If you put a force on it, it would then push back at you. So that's why it was actually really hard to get it. But the thing is, with the microgravity, a small push results in big upwards force. So we actually had to make sure we got the exact amount of increment and then bring the sample up and then go back into space and inject it into the good deserve. And that's why Zaris Rex is now a success. Thanks for watching.